Hey, Money Guy family, it's your host, Brian Preston, back with another episode of Ask the Money Guy. That's right, you guys have financial questions, we've got your financial answers. Go out to your favorite social, use the hashtag Ask the Money Guy, or you can go to our website, moneyguy.com, and ask a question right there. It's Brian Preston, the Money Guy. So Brian, today's a question we get all the time. We get it from young people, middle-aged people, and old people, and it generally goes something like this. Do I need life insurance, or do I even need life insurance, or when do I not need life insurance? How do I know if it's something that makes sense for me? So life insurance is, let's, you're basically covering the risk that you're not here to cover for somebody who needs you and is counting on you. Because a lot of you, think about it, a lot of us have people that are counting on our income. So if we left the earth tomorrow, there's, it's going to leave some people high and dry. Now, sure. there are a few people, if you're single and you have nobody that's counting on you for your income, um, you might not need as much life insurance. You might just need enough for burial expenses. Yeah, but I would make the argument, if you're someone who has an appropriate emergency fund in place, you probably don't even need life that's insurance true. for that. So Good if you point. have some sort of emergency fund or some sort of le some level of investments, you probably don't even need life insurance to cover your burial expenses. So if it really is just you, yourself, and you, you probably don't need life insurance. If you're, let's take everybody else. That's if you got kids, you're married, or maybe you're just married and have a mortgage too. Somebody is obviously, if you left, somebody's counting on you. Right. They need your income and you left prematurely before you could cover everything with your own assets. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of talk about now, how much insurance do you need? The rule of thumb that you see all over the place, you can go on YouTube and see a lot of places reference it, is 10 times your income. And that is a great rule of thumb or a guideline. However, the true calculation is you take what do your survivors need living expense wise that you need to cover mm -hmm. plus any obligations maybe you have some more a mortgage to pay off maybe you have kids that you want to put through college so you need to fund their college savings all that stuff goes into account but if you just want to know something really quick napkin math do 10 times your income and maybe add the mortgage on top of that yeah but remember rules of thumb are exactly that rules of thumb and they're stereotypes if you're someone who's just starting out very early in your career and your income trajectory is going to change over your career 10 times your income may not be it's enough true. based on today's income. If you're someone who's only five years away from retirement or five years away from the kids being out of the house and you have assets built up, you may no longer need 10 times your income. So it is kind of dependent on your unique circumstances. Great point, Bo. And then the last thing, well, two things, term versus permanent. Mm. Man, this is one because as soon as you have a friend that gets into the financial field, and I use the rabbit ear is financial, meaning they're selling life insurance, you're going to notice all of a sudden they got to start pushing what's mm -hmm. permanent insurance, right. meaning it has cash value and the benefit is it never goes away. Right. So the problem I have, if you're trying to figure out term versus permanent, is that I think a lot of life insurance for the majority of people out there, the need actually goes away. Sure. If you think about it, let's give you some examples. You're somebody like me in my 40s, in the next 20 years, my oldest child will have graduated college. She's already a sophomore in high school. Um, in the next 20 years, I will hopefully have built enough army of dollar bills that I'm truly financially independent. Sure. So if I have all my kids taken care of and accounted for, if I've got my wife and family taken care of, if I'm debt free, why do I need the life insurance? Right. So as you can see, it's a term certain period that I actually have the risk that needs to be covered. Yep. And because I'm like so many other people, I think term insurance is probably going to be your friend. Now there's obviously special situations where permanent insurance might come into play, but that's not even as big as it used to be sure. though, because now with estate taxes, what's the threshold? It's I mean, $22 million for a married couple or $11 million for an individual. So you've right? got to have a pretty big estate that you need to have insurance for estate purposes. And then if you need one more exclamation point, consider this. If you bought whole life insurance and you needed a million dollars in your 40 years of age and you're a man, what do you think that costs a year? This will blow your mind. A whole life policy for a million dollars of coverage is 13,000, this is according to NerdWallet, $13,900. I mean, that that's as big as a mortgage payment almost. It's over oh, it's $1,000 a month. I mean, imagine if you're investing $14,000 a year in yep. your financial future, you're gonna reach financial independence a lot quicker. The same level of coverage, meaning if you die in the next 20 years, you get the exact same payout 
term insurance for a 40 year old, $1 million is six, around $600 a year. So it's approximately four to six percent of, that's how term versus whole life works. Why would you ever buy that yep. if, unless you're in a specialized situation? The lion's share of people would do very well looking at term insurance. It, needing life insurance is essentially a temporary problem. And so if you have a temporary problem, you ought to think about having a temporary solution. That's correct. There's no, there's no need to assign a permanent solution to a temporary problem unless you are someone in a unique circumstance where permanent insurance makes sense. Last thing on life insurance. We have this question. We've even done an Ask the Money Guy, but I feel like it's worth repeating. Eating. If you have a spouse that is staying at home with the children, yep. or you know who's taking care of the household, I like to call them the household chief operations officer. Yep. Um, you might be saying, well, if they don't have income coming in, do I really need insurance? I'm going to tell you, I think the answer is yes, because if something should happen to that spouse that's helping out with the kids and keeping things running at the house, if they left early and you were counting on them, you're probably going to have to take work time off of work yourself. You're still going to have mortgages. You're still going to have kids that need to go to college. You may have to employ in-house help. Exactly. Nanny. So there's definitely some insurability risk that you ought to cover. A term Term policy on that spouse, you know, is probably not going to cost a lot of sure. money. So it's definitely something you ought to consider. Consider measure twice, cut once, and then that risk will be counted for and taken care of in the future. This was a great question. If you guys have questions, you want to get our take, our view, our thoughts on it, go out to your favorite social, use the hashtag Ask the Money Guy, or you can go directly to our website, MoneyGuy.com. Click on Ask and go ask this question right there. Thanks, guys, for the question. Keep them coming. Brian and Bo out.